It's The Secret Show, and I think we're actually on the air right now, Mark Sargent. Are we on the air right now? <laughs> yes, we are. <sighs> it's good to be back. Yes, it is. Episode number 214 of The Secret Show is on the air. And hello to all in our live chat. We'll come and visit in just a little bit. I'm Patricia Steer, and of course, that is Mark Sargent. A lot has elapsed since, well, it's been less than a month, of course, but it seems like in Flat Earth time, it's been six months since we last did a show. Um, why is Flat Earth time different than regular time? It is because Flat Earth, I, in fact, I've been reading emails today, as you know, I go get a ton of emails. Uh, flat Earth is an obsession. And in any obsession... Wait, it, it's what? Wait, hold on. Let me just check and see <laughs> new videos. Hold on a moment. Hold that thought. Okay. Since Somebody, five I think, minutes ago, there's it. been 15 new videos. Uh, but I don't Yeah, I know. As, as a matter of fact, <laughs> funny, funny you mentioned that because when you type in like Flat Earth right now into YouTube... And, oh, I've got an interesting... There's an interesting article I should probably mention on this as well. But And you sort by upload date, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so normally, if you just click on the filter, you're coming at 4.7. But if you sort by upload date, as of this morning, <sighs> it's getting ridiculous. It's at 19.8, which is 19.8 million uh, relevant search hits, which is massive. Which is pro and which is con, which is... Which is know. all. But, it, you know, you compare it to it's other things. It's being mentioned in other things that have nothing to do with Flat Earth. I, I subscribe to this channel called Vegan Zombie. And um, it's these two young guys, I think they're in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. And they sit around and do reviews, like, we're going to review these vegan cheeses. And they're just chilling out and, you know, with their vegan t-shirts on and testing cheeses and making a pizza. And they right. were making a pizza and putting different types of vegan cheese on it and then they said they were going to make a little map on top of the pizza so that they'd be able to tell which cheese was which so that when they did the taste test, they could say what they were rating. Sure. And they said, look at the pizza. Is it a round earth or is it a flat earth? Nice. Out of the blue. It's not a flat earth channel. They never talk about flat earth. And there's another vegan channel. I guess I watch a lot of vegan channels. It's called Happy Healthy Vegan. And it's a husband and wife. And the guy's name is Ryan. And Ryan was doing a regular, you know, everyday vlog that he does. And he was wearing a NASA shirt. Now, really? he doesn't ever talk about Flat Earth or NASA, but I guess it's cool and hip or whatever. And so I made a comment about liking his video, and I told him to ditch the NASA shirt. So Flat Earth stuff or Globe Earth stuff that Flat Earthers pick up on, like NASA shirts, those little gems are hidden in videos that absolutely have nothing to do with Flat Earth. It's right. everywhere. Right. Well, that brought that off Broadway play, which is yes. coming out this month called This Flat Earth. Mm -hmm. Now, I finally got a hold of the script and the script. It doesn't have anything to do with Flat Earth other than Flat Earth is an impossible concept. So the, the topic is actually about a school shooting of all things. It's like That's kids, kids reacting to a school shooting, which is odd. considering we just Weird. I know. Right. Since. Being involved in Flat Earth opens your minds to all sorts of things about school shooting. Yeah. Do, uh, do jet airplanes carry fuel in the wings? Yeah. Are there forests on Flat Earth, et cetera, et cetera? So, yeah. one, what, yeah, it is, as I've mentioned to you before, one side effect of Flat Earth is that it opens your mind completely to where topics you never, ever would have broached before you now are. Another and side effect is going through each person's name that you know and their channel name and seeing if it adds up to 666 or 33. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Lots of people are into Gematria now. Yeah. Lots of people are, are, are touching on subjects. Well, you remember when uh, No Forest on Flat Earth came out? Oh, yeah. And it's like, if you would have brought that up to me three years ago, I would have been nut job. But oh, well, no. what if somebody brought up Flat Earth to you? Well, three years ago, you kind of were into it. Well, well, no, ago, we'll, we'll say three years ago, though. For most people, it's yeah. three years. Would, uh, would you have also said nut job? I mean, you were into yeah. Hollow Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have. I would have. It Just because I casually glanced at that Cesar video in 2014, mm -hmm. kind of like, huh, German guys look nutty, but it's not terrible. I it's, don't it's, remember it's, seeing the pictures of uh, ships, you know, those old ships with the mast over the horizon. I don't right. remember consciously ever seeing those things and laughing at it. But I'll bet, just like all of us, we did at one point because those images really are everywhere. There's an article. I, I have to mention this. Sorry. I, there's so much content we have to cover. But there was an article written recently. This goes into the whole obsession thing. Because as you know, conspiracies have been kind of getting hammered on by, by the mainstream media. 
And there was an article done, and I'm trying to find it. If somebody finds it before I do, please let me know. But it was by an ex-YouTube employee that was saying why YouTube tends to recommend conspiracy stuff. And he mentioned Flat Earth by name more than other people. And he said that the algorithms, one of the biggest things that the algorithms pick up on is minutes watched. And minutes watched, as you know, for flat earth is much different than somebody that's trying to eat three boxes of cereal or do a hot sauce challenge or something like that. Or a Tide Pod challenge, <laughs> yeah, there you go. which Fla we've got coming up in the second part of this program. Wow. <laughs> Outstanding. I'm all for it. Thumbs up. The uh, So people, flat earth videos go long. I mean, like my, my flat earth videos, my channel right now, I think I had, what, eight point something million minutes watched in the last 30 days. That's a lot, right? And there's a lot more and multiply that by a lot of channels doing flat earth. And that is why it gets recommended more than, than most. Yeah, it's hits. Yeah, it's subs. But remember, YouTube is a business and they want people to sit there in front of YouTube and they want you to watch. They don't care what you're watching on YouTube as long as you're watching YouTube. Mm. And so if you're, con you know, if you're watching a two hour flat earth video or a bunch, you know, the bigger thing with flat earth is, as you know, you've heard this from other people, when you start getting into flat earth, you go several weeks worth of videos. You're just watching them nonstop. You just hit autoplay. It's like, all right, let's, let's. It let's, was so much easier back in 2015. Today, oh, so much there's no easier. way to get through all of it. No, no way. No, there's lifetimes worth of content mm -hmm. out there now. But a lot of bad content too. So maybe in a way, kind of. Um, it's, uh, it's been, it's been watered down if that makes any sense. Yes. There well, weren't as many well, hit pieces it, back in 2015 as there are now. It, it yeah. has been watered down, but then I still believe that, uh, the cream rises to the top. Hmm. You know, I mean, yes. Like if you type in flat earth into, I, mean, I don't even have to put in, I, like you even try to just type in, type in flat into YouTube. It's going to fill it in for you. Uh, there's what happens now is remember how we were talking about like the big channels, the big verified channels, all of them have started talking about it. And, uh, you know, ABC news, Anthony Padilla, BBC news, all time conspiracies come. I mean, they're just, that's just a battery of verified channels. And once you can get past those, yeah, you got to get, you know, to find the, the actual content, it takes a little while now because you've got major, major channels that are reporting on the topic, but that doesn't necessarily hurt us because the exposure that they gave us in the first place gets people to, you know, it's the teasers, you know, you're looking, it's like, wow, a lot of people are talking about this. And so you do have to go through a few pages before you find the, the, the meat of it. Do you remember the channel learn of the Jesuit order? I think everyone does. Yeah, around for yeah a while. I remember that. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, he did lots of NASA busting videos and then he came out about the ISS right. spe specifically. And then he came out and kind of took it all back and said he wasn't really quite sure. Yep. Then his channel went down, then his channel came back up. And the other day he made some kind of a video kind of making fun of flat earth. Right. Asking for proof of flat earth. That it, okay, so he could be trolling or maybe now he believes the ISS is up there or the ISS is potentially real and the earth's a globe. So really, what is his channel about? I, you know, I'm I don't confused as the topic. No, no, that's a good the, point. The I Jesuit don't... order, but the Jesuit order, if you want to go along the, and point a finger at somebody is responsible for, you know, the, the, the globe model being put into play in the first place. I so if don't... you're going to learn of the Jesuit order, you're going to learn that the earth is flat. Eventually. What he's, what he's doing now, I have no idea what he's doing now, but he used to be an interesting. You brought him up because he used to be literally my favorite NASA bashing channel. Yeah, he was great. That guy went on some freaking jags. <laughs> it's like, he just pull up the screens. It's like, look at this piece of crap. Look at these. Like, he'd swear all the time mm. and, and just make these. And yeah, he was doing really well. And then he pulled himself down. It seemed voluntary, but we had our suspicions. It's like, okay, what'd you shut down for? And then slowly but surely he was putting videos back up, but you know how hard it is to to get back in now. Right, right. If any of our channels go down, there is no possibility of immediately going back up with whatever your sub count is. It just doesn't happen like that. The, um, um, it takes a long time, if ever, to get back whatever you originally had. And I'm quick. not saying learn of the Jesuit orders a bad guy or his content's bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I am confused by where his head is. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Hey, uh, while while we were kind of talking, the peanut gallery, he helps out all the time, apparently. People wonder he, who the peanut gallery is. And I've heard someone say, is that Mark belittling somebody that they're, they're peanuts, they're nothing? It's a friend of Mark's. Yes. And uh, this person just sort of makes little comments. And Mark has named him the peanut gallery, so he doesn't have to say the guy's name. And I know you're not old enough to remember who the actual peanut gallery is, but the peanut gallery was the kids that would sit in the stands at the Howdy Doody show oh yeah it's back how in the day that time. predates that predates us and i mean that's I old think school my mom watched the howdy doody show yeah that's like back in the days of the original mouse right. and andy griffith and leave it to beaver and, the one of the uh, original Mouseketeers. I guess before they became what they are today, which would be the people that end up being Britney Spears or pushing the agenda forward, all this kind yeah. of crazy, sexual, yeah. creepy stuff. Yeah. But they, if you think about my mom, you told me that when she was young, all the boys liked a mouseketeer named Annette. I think it yeah, was Annette. Annette, Annette Funicello. Was it Annette Funicello or was it just Annette? Uh, well, we'll sure have to look that up, but she had very large breasts, wearing a very baggy sweater, but at the time it was scandalous. So uh, that girl was promoting a sexual agenda. Maybe this was planned through Maybe. through Walt Disney. Maybe. I'm going to look up Annette right now. And it's got to be Annette Funicello because she was part of all the, the later beach party movies with, oh boy, Frankie Avalon. Frankie Avalon. Huh? Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello. They were the couple. The article, by the way, the... the oh my uh, gosh, it was Annette Funicello. Man, you're I, good. I, I know media. The um, I absorb all media. The uh, It was from Vice News. Vice, who, of course, you know, did their, their piece on... Well, they did several pieces on us. But the article is called, if you guys want to read it, it's interesting. It's how YouTube's algorithm prioritizes conspiracy theories. Literally, that's the title of the article. Huh. And he was saying that he was working on stuff all the way back to 2010. And it says YouTube was programming its algorithm to optimize for one key metric, keeping viewers on the site for as long as possible to maximize watch time. And because Flat Earth, you know, it's self-perpetuating, we generate huge amounts of content, which in turn... YouTube says, well, it's trending. Let's rank up, recommend it to people and more people watch it. Which, you know, and then the whole thing just turns cyclical. So that's an interesting article. If you guys want to watch it, uh, the segment for this, there was actually a video segment on this that ran March 5th, just a little while ago on Vice News Tonight, HBO, the same people that came down and talked to us at the conference. You know how everyone's been worried. It's gone in waves, but there's a current worry about you're getting your channel taken down if you talk about any specific uh, events that ha may or may not have been real, et cetera, and name names and et cetera. Uh, all of that has caused what they, what did they call it? The Adageddon? No, that wasn't what it was called. Oh, no, no. Uh, Adpocalypse. Ad Ad Adageddon's good, too. <laughs> Adageddon's good, too. The, the Adpocalypse. Adpocalypse. Yeah. Well, I did notice today when I set this video up, I it's uh, just after 5 p.m. Central Time, and at, at around 4 p.m. Central Time, I put it up. And I noticed already, before the video began, it had the monetization sign toward put to yellow yellow that flag means yeah. it's not suitable for uh most advertisers uh hello we haven't even made the video yet so immediately bam because flat earth is in the title right not suitable why that's well so you you can be don't don't worry about that so oh, i'm not worried about it at all because you just uh appeal and then they go through it uh with a person instead of a robot but i think it's very interesting that they will flag a flat earth video that doesn't have anything in the title other than the secret show, Mark Sargent, Patricia Steer, flat earth. Right. It, why would they be flagging that video as not suitable for most advertisers? Flat earth. I has mean, been on we've only talked about breasts once so far. <laughs> so what would be any other reason for them to flag? flat earth hot sex has been one of those on the cusp titles out mm -hmm. there. Uh, it is not still and lucky. Luckily for us, I remember when the adpocalypse came, you know, really hit and I took we I, you know, I, you know me, I'm a stat nut. We only lost about 10 percent during during that whole thing. I mean, we bounced back really quick to we're, we're back up or we're at 19.8. That's that's rare air even for us. And every video that that of mine that was demonetized. They gave it back to me monetized after I said, hey, there's nothing wrong with this video. Please review. They reviewed. 
came back, thumbs up, green light. Same with the, you, right? Yep, yep, yep. The uh, in fact, I've I've appealed so many times that now they 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 remember the system does learn. And now they don't even yell a flag me anymore because it's like, okay, well, he's appealed 10 times in a row, whatever it is, and he's gotten them back every time. Let's not even. So the original well, yellow. Now's the flag, time to put in the really bad stuff, Mark. Exactly. <laughs> now, all nudity, all the time. No, the, um, uh, th when you get yellow flag, that's a machine doing it. Right. When you get appealed, that's a person looking at it and say, okay, maybe the machine got it wrong. And just so everybody knows this, the yellow flag does not mean that people aren't seeing it. It means you cannot make money. Well, you're going to make money off of it, but it's going to be really rare. Meaning the advertisers that are going to be on your on that video are going to be the bottom of the barrel advertisers. Right, right. You're not going to get any mainstream. You're not going to get Chevy or Domino's or Sony or whatever else. You're only going to get. You're going to get the Suzanne Summers shake weight or something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're going to get a Billify. You're going to yes. get some sort of pharmaceutical that nobody wants. But I think though, that it is somewhat of a scam because what happens is if you're trying to make money on YouTube, forget about if it's flat earth, no matter what it is, any topic, and they do this flagging of your video, that video will get aired to your subscribers and a few others. Of course. And yeah. then time will go by where the video gets stale. And in that time frame, you haven't been able to make money because it's been flagged. And then when they manually review it and realize there's nothing wrong with the video, they let you have it back, but you won't make much money now because most everyone's seen it. The Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I've watched a lot of videos on the whole ad apocalypse and, and what, what it meant. The, the sinister side of it is, and I don't know why, I mean, it's Google, they can get away with what they want, is they don't tell you when you're yellow flagged. That's the difference between everything else. You 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 use copyright material, they're going to send you an email. You get blocked, you're going to get a, an email. You get struck, you're going to get an email. You get yellow flagged, they don't have to send you anything. Right, you have Which, to just be looking. You literally looking. have to go in every day, go to your videos, if you make a lot, especially if, if you haven't checked them in a while, and go to the little drop down that says limited or not monetized. Or, or little monetization and and filter by that and see if there's any yellow flags that show up and then you know appeal what you can and i recommend just you know it just doesn't matter what they say just appeal them peel them all and you'll be fine it was initially designed just so you guys know and i won't dwell on this too much it, the original adpocalypse was meant for the video game review guys that were making money off of video games that were really really violent that's initially what it was for because the the massive uh, sponsors, you take your pick, any big corporation, they didn't want to be tied to videos that they considered offensive. And that was one of the big things. So they demonetized huge channel, a lot of channels. I mean, a lot of people went down, people that were making, you know, a living doing, you know, for whatever reason, video games mostly. But that's what happened. And now, you know, they've, they've thinned out the herd somewhat. They still know where else to go in, but, and then recently they've been doing the conspiracy stuff. They've in the last couple of years, they were kind of toying with the idea and they've really focused on, and I don't want to dwell on this too much, but you know what I'm going to talk about, which is, mm -hmm. uh, shootings, which is any public shootings in the United States that's kind of now considered taboo when it comes to YouTube. It doesn't mean it's automatic, it's going to happen, but there's no statute of limitations. So if you make a video that's critical and says, oh, the shootings were a hoax and blah, 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 because of the new bullying rules, like Sandy Hook is a perfect example. People now, if, if anyone that's tied to Sandy Hook, if they send an email or whatever to report you to YouTube and say, look, I feel that this shooting hoax video is bullying me, YouTube can come back and say, oh, yeah, by the way, strike. And if you have a bunch of them, you could be in real trouble because they can go bam, 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 bam and, and take down the take down the channel. Meanwhile, there are people, um, Flat Earthers and others who are actually bullying other people and there's no way you can make them stop. So it's <sighs> I know. Yeah, it is. It is double not. Stamp. Yeah, it's not objective in, in the slightest. It is mainstream media based you know they're they're leaning on them the the big thing was and again let me just mention it was the parkland thing because we haven't talked about parkland mm -hmm. uh the parkland shooting where the number one trending video within the first 24 hours was is david hogg a real guy 
you mm-hmm. know, or is he some sort of crisis actor? And it was trending. I mean, it was literally trending. So the mainstream media, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to run the story. And then all of a sudden YouTube, their, their lawyers like, holy crap, you know, cause they were getting hit, uh, hell for running, you know, making this like, okay, why is this trending? Why are you letting this trend? And YouTube had to go back in and, and start, you know, hammering on people that were, they were doing it. So it's, it's not fair, but it's, for me, it wasn't much of a big deal because I focus on flat Earth and flat Earth only. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you guys can run whatever you want. I don't. I'm not saying you you shouldn't run stuff on on hoaxes. Just be careful because YouTube is so. A much tip more would aware. be don't put in the title of your video something scandalous, even if that's actually your subject that's, matter. Yeah, that's what they go after. They don't. They're not going after the content as much that what you know what's inside the video. They still will though. So eh, a little bit, even if that's what all your video is. But if if they really that you look for the title, if it's blatant, it's it's in the title. That's what they go after first. They go after the surface level stuff because that's what people click on. People click on stuff based on the title. So if but again, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I've, I've never really run them much anyway. For me, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it, the, the shooting stuff upsets me and, and I don't like, I mean, I've got my opinion on them, but I'm not going to make dedicated videos against them anymore. Uh, it's usually it'll be just interactive stuff. Yes, other exactly. people. I do want to mention Martin Leakey, Flat Earth British. His channel uh, is on pause, I guess, based on some YouTube regulations. And he has another channel that you can subscribe to called uh, Flat Earth British Filtered. So look that one up and subscribe to Martin Leakey that way because his current channel, as far as I know today, isn't operable. And he's been putting out some great videos. So I want right. to give Martin Leakey uh, a thumbs up and a plug because um, he didn't deserve the uh, uh, strike that he got. I remember a long time ago, he got a strike because he was in his backyard with a friend of his and a neighbor was playing a song on the radio. Oh, and it picked it up. Yeah, and picked it up. It, you know, it's it's strange. <laughs> Not like, right. It, it really varies on you know copyright music. General ninety nine percent of the time, you can you you know me. I mean, I've used more copyright songs than I can count. And I've used a f- little bit in promos, and they give you a warning right before you're ready to make it's, it public. It's not even a warning, though. It's just to let you know. It's like, hey, y- you're not going to get the nickels for this. Right, right. Uh, somebody else is going to get them. Here it is, and here's you know, it's, here's why. In fact, they put a line nowadays. And you, you, they changed the line over the last couple of years. The line says, "You're not in tr- trouble for this, and this isn't going to affect your standing." Mm-hmm. And and they do that because you know you get that message it's like ah crap oh, no what, my channel's going <laughs> what do they do um, they won't most of the time you won't you won't get hit for songs so anyone that gives me crap says how are you getting away with copyrighted yeah. songs it's like no 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 you can use copyrighted songs you're just not going to get paid for it it's the videos that will get you in trouble from time to time and that is somebody makes some sort of video content and you use a snippet of it unless you claim fair use you, you know, for whatever reason you know me i'm saying look if you if you're doing a flat earth story i'm going to report on you covering it so that's fair and and you can get away with that and sometimes they'll challenge you on it but you can appeal and and that works fine uh, but yeah you just got to be careful just don't and richie from boston um was getting his channel shut down and then a number of his uh, supporters, I think they wrote YouTube or Google, I think Google, I'm not sure. Anyway, and he ended up getting a lawyer and I'm not sure exactly what occurred, but he ended up getting his channel released from, I don't know, purgatory or whatever happened to it. I Yeah, and some people bounce back better than others. As you know, ODD got smacked down pretty hard and he rebuilt -hmm. rebuilt from scratch and now he became the first flat earth verified channel. And you can rebuild them better, stronger, faster. Yeah. Like the $6 million man. Yeah. Others don't bounce back as quickly. I'm going to take a quick shot at Eric because Eric got his brought down, but that was brought down for a different reason. It wasn't copyright stuff. It wasn't bullying. It was straight up hate speech and YouTube doesn't like that either. So be nice. But also you can get your channel taken down even if you are nice. I just think that there's all (laughs) sorts of little ins and outs that you have to be careful. And all of us are always a little bit on guard about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, every time I open up YouTube now, because if you ever get a copyright strike, you haven't you haven't gotten one yet, right? Right, right. Yeah, no. when you get it, it's a it's jarring. Because, <laughs> you open your email and there's a noise that says, "No, no, no, it's, it's, <laughs> fear <laughs> no, in your heart." <laughs> yeah, 
it's like at the opening of Inception. Yes. No, it's a, no, it's, it, you don't even get to open up your email. You go and you log into YouTube and your YouTube immediately switches from your, from its normal mode to just a big red page with a lot of red Ooh, on it. It says, I mean, that literally takes over your screen. You cannot get into YouTube without logging out of your account. And you're, it says, look, you, you have a copyright strike and you have to go to, you know, copyright school, which is so, so lame. It's just totally after school type of writing. Like driver's on the education school. Oh yeah. It's, it's no, write this hundred times in the blackboard type crap right. where they list you a bunch of questions. It's just like, you know, stealing is wrong. You know, the equivalent of that. And it's like, uh, agree. Only if you get caught. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> it's like acquitted. <laughs> no. <laughs> So you, you have to go through that and then it, then they tell you it's like and one strike, you know, that's fine. It's a three strikes system and you get one strike and well, but one strike you might. Is that when you can't live stream? No, no, no. One strike. You're fine. One strike is, is just one strike. It just says, hey, you get one. You're you're, you're fine. This is a warning. This shot. one's on the house. Yeah, this first one's on one's the house. Free, kid. Much, but <laughs> don't do it again. Now, if you get a second strike while the first strike is still in effect, oh. because the, the strikes fade away. It's kind of like gaming. The, the strikes fade away. So three months, just, I think, right? Yeah, three months unless you appeal it and, and mm -hmm. get it turned over. And I've appealed stuff and gotten it turned over in little as a few hours, depending on who you're working with, or a few weeks if they're just going to drag your feet and drag your feet. But if you get a second strike while the first strike is still in effect, your live streams are shut down. You're limited to, I think, 15 minute videos like you were when you first created your YouTube account. And you, you're pretty, you're, you're really crippled, you know, in that, mm -hmm. that you, you're, you got to be on your toes. And then if you get a third strike while those other two are under effect, well, then you're done. And then your appeal process is much, much dip, more difficult. I've also heard that they can strike you on videos that you've made private or that you've deleted. All right. You can be struck from what I've found is from my experience you know me i like to ride the line from time to time is that they will strike you on videos that are still in your system either public or unlisted unlisted not private not private because oh. because if it's private it, it's tough to even find it now right. and deleted i've never ever even, i've never seen that i've Meaning, heard this now now of course that that's not to say that once you get struck, and that's the first thing YouTube tells you when you when you get in there, is if you get struck on a video, even if you delete it, then it doesn't matter because it's like, look, we saw you, you know, we saw you do it, so therefore it's it's on record. But if you delete it before, let's say here here's a perfect example, real quick. Let's say you know somebody's going to report you in a video. They write you and say, I'm going to report you, blah blah blah, right? and they're they're going to do that. Well, if you delete it, the video before they can even report it. YouTube can't smack you because. Really? Are you sure? Because I've heard they could. Hey, give me if give me they've like, got the URL. Uh, oh, you gotta go. Oh, you no, no, go. cover cover for me. I'll cover for you. I will go into the live chat. See, I've heard that they can get you. I have no idea. But um, speaking of people who've got copyright strikes and their channels taken away, Russian Vids, his channel is still gone, but. He's going to be my guest on Friday. Uh, today is Wednesday the 7th, so it's going to be Friday the 9th of March, 2018, Russian Vids and I. Now, I've already interviewed Russian Vids. It's on my channel, but this is just going to be another kind of conversation, not really an interview, just us discussing things and hopefully not going too far with any of our discussion. It is really tough because, you know, you want to talk about all these things, especially with Russian Vids, but you got to walk the line, so... Anyway, hello to Felix. I don't know if that's Felix I am with a new name. No idea. Hey, Brian Burton and D-I-T-R-H, Rob Morrill, and hey, Flat Accord Music, and Robert Wigles. And up, oh, see, Robert says Jaron got one from a deleted video yesterday. Indeed, I heard the same thing. Um, Wesley Stace, Flat Earth News. He thanks for the compliment. He says, my hair's looking fabulous, but Mark's looks like crap. <laughs> Good thing Mark's not here to hear it. Uh, <laughs> hi to uh, Carl Steinbeck and Arwen and Joe Green. And uh, let's see, Zelda Love. Hello, Zelda. Epsom Vince. And um, he's asking a question, which I don't know. Uh, Zulu One that. is here and Tinker. Hey, Authentic Intent. Glad you're back doing all sorts of uh, new live streams. So if you've 
uh, kind of lost track of authentic intent. Josh, he is back. Ginger Sugarbush905 is here. Hello, Flat Earth Vegans and Native Engine. And hey, King TL. Hi there. Um, what else we got here? I'm scrolling up here. Uh, 73 Mabrin, who says that CNN said that flat earthers are terrorists. No, I have not seen that. Uh, Dorje uh, Daka I, is here. Have you seen that? No, no. And there's been mm -hmm. plenty of chances. You know me. We, we've talked about this where we suspected that eventually Flat Earth would be branded as a cult. Mm -hmm. And BuzzFeed, that, that was the perfect opportunity. And to, to date, no one has done that. I thought they would bring the terrorism uh, angle in when, remember, back in maybe 2015, Jaren's boat, that whole thing? Yeah, but the boat that was early 2016. Yeah, the boat didn't, blow, didn't. Up, blow up, though. Didn't right, catch right. fire. I mean, it'd be <laughs> different if you, like, painted skull and crossbones on it and say, die, globalists, and, you know, <laughs> blow the thing up. But um, they didn't. Joe Green says, this is pertaining to the Richie from Boston saying that his uh, subscribers wrote uh, YouTube and Google and he got his channel back and he got a lawyer. Joe says, where's the address you write YouTube or Google at? I call BS. I mean, it is pretty hard to actually speak to a person on Google and YouTube, but maybe oh, when impossible. you have really big numbers. Uh, if you have, yeah, if you're a really big channel, I'm sure you can go back. Like if you've got a point, Google play button when you've reached those lofty yeah things. because at that point you're assigned a rep i mean because you're part of the youtube the, the upper echelon you go to the the, U, the youtube award shows and you do you know helpful seminar things Special cocktail parties exactly so you've Eyes got wide a guy shut you can, parties at that point yeah you can talk to him and say hey man can you help me out like <laughs> exactly. so um, um Hello to Zoe of Be Here in Love as well, and Happy Ray, and Bob of Globusters. I don't know if I said that already. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and a bunch of other people who are way up higher on the list that were here earlier in the show. I hope I've not missed anyone, but I will come back in. Oh, hey, Shill Scanner. I'll come back in and, and, and chat with you guys in a bit. Okay, so before you left us, what were we talking about? <laughs> Previously on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. <laughs> we should go. Oh my God. Okay. My father. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> You're what? <laughs> it isn't mine. <laughs> How can you be pregnant? You're a man. <laughs> All right. Psst, hey, sis, you awake? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, so <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about a couple of things real quick uh, because let's let's go down the YouTube path a little bit further. Which was uh, this will segue in nicely. As you know, last time since you and I have talked, the this is going to give you an idea of how far we've come. So not only do we have nineteen point eight million hit results, but literally, literally, the number one subscriber channel in the history of YouTube decided to do a flat Earth video. And we all know who that is. It's PewDiePie. Uh, <laughs> oh, just the name. It, it's yeah. I hate PewDiePie. Okay, and and which I, is great. I don't hey. hate him. I just think he's so average. And when average yes. is the height of what is popular and loved, it makes me wonder why any of us are doing anything we do. He is, well, look, content rules, and again, the cream rises to the top. He so, is. So, why is he popular? Because he currently, because social media is a little different than real life. He's the equivalent of the closest I could come up with is the, he's the Paris Hilton of social media. Paris Hilton, as you guys know, a few years ago, she was popular. She almost coined the phrase just by be existing famous for being famous right right meaning didn't she always say that's hot <sighs> don't, don't start with paris hilton let's well, see and she had a shoe line a very inexpensive uh shoe line i do yeah. know that be before yeah. before the kardashians there was paris hilton and the kardashians are also the epitome of that they don't do anything they're literally Wait. famous for being famous wasn't kim kardashian and paris hilton friends at one point too uh, wouldn't surprise me. No, oh, exactly. also Lionel Richie's daughter, daughter Nicole Richie. Correct. Nicole Richie. That was her. That was her bestie. Mm -hmm. Ugh, the term bestie. All of yeah. it. So average. So if let me let me tell you. So I'm I'm happy that PewDiePie made a video literally called. Proof oh, I mean, 
It's great. You're right. Pro proof the earth is flat. That was initially what he titled it. And then he thought different. It's like, holy crap, maybe I shouldn't have titled it that because then he called it. Uh, he tacked on the end meme review number eight. There's a there's a cat sighting, right? There's a cat. Oh, yeah. This is Greary right here. Oh, you can't see her. She's black and she's a. Uh, there she <laughs> is. <laughs> well, she's black and she kind of blends in with my. Greer doesn't usually show up on camera. No, she certainly doesn't hide Greer. Sometimes when I'm doing a show, she uh, is the only girl of my three. I have these catnip toys that look like sticks of dynamite. Yeah, violent. But um, anyway, I hear her and she has a very sweet meow, meow, meow. And she runs with it in her mouth and brings it and lays it at my feet while you and I are doing a show. And oh, I think it's so that's cute. Nice. Sort of like a suicide bomber cat. Yep, yeah, pretty much. She's trying to kill me. That's good. But I can't ever share this because it's happening on the floor while we're here. So. I will I will segue into the suicide bomber thing because I want to read read part of a Russia Today article. But let me talk about PewDiePie here because I got to get this rant out. Okay, okay. I, go. I, PewDiePie has always bothered me because he stumbled onto something, and then I've always heard you know it, you know me I love media and I love uh, you know all the little aspects and the little dirt thing dirt piles you can find. I'd always heard that there was a marketing machine behind PewDiePie, and that his numbers were inflated. As you guys, some of you may or may not know, you can buy subs, you can buy thumbs up, thumbs down, you can buy comments, you can buy pretty much anything. You can buy thumbs down on other people's videos. Yeah, why, why not? I mean, I mean that's nuts. And it's, it, it is not uh, um, expensive. You can, you can, you can spend, you know, if you have a couple allowed? of grand, you can really do some damage. Why is it allowed? Why isn't it allowed? Who's going to check? It's allowed. Okay. It's allowed because there's no way to monitor it. There's no way nice. to prove it. So the, the cutting edge of technology has gotten to the point where we can't stop stuff preempt we can't be proactive about it we've got to be reactive to it like sniping you know you like say, sniping, why is right. youtube and google allowing that well they're not allowing it it's just there's just no way to prevent it so yeah it so makes he makes a video some year a few years back let's say five years ago i think it was 2012 to be honest about and he, his timing was perfect he wasn't didn't even do anything he just recorded a video of him laughing at a minecraft zombie that it was getting stuck in a minecraft tree now i hate i love zombies and i love trees but i hate minecraft minecraft is not even a game it's an eight-bit editor i hate it hate it hate it but he recorded himself just laughing i don't know he was high or drunk or whatever cackling like a little girl laughing at this thing and i got a few million hits that reminds me of that dope fish guy yes very much like dope fish when right. he was laughing at flat earth and for a very very small time became the number one flat earth video and then he tried to do it again with other videos and then, yeah, and he was like, yeah got nothing <laughs> yeah it's like okay so who gave you that and he now i've never even seen dope fish in the list that he's been buried so far down so what i think happened was this the marketing machine it, it's it's cyclical and it works which is okay you get paid let's say we'll, we'll use the today's numbers you get paid about a thousand dollars per million hits on youtube you take that money and you invest it and you buy more hits, right? And those hits get you more money. So you get some of your money back and then you just keep pumping more money into it. And your subs, your subs go up because as you know, social media, it's called social rel relevance. It's one of the forms of persuasion, which is you can do this. You, you know how it works. All you have to do, you want to open a new restaurant? Fine. Open a new restaurant, hire some people to in a velvet rope to crowds for hire or something. Yeah. And eventually you're going to get legit people on the edge of those crowds going, yeah, I heard this place is amazing. We got to absolutely get in there. But eventually somebody's got to go into the restaurant and eat because, you know, you got to you got to have some sort of content. Well, by that time, what he had done was he had generated enough subs to where people were subbing to him because they felt they would be left out if they didn't sub to him. It's like, you, you know, you roll by him. It's like, wow, he's got five million hits and my friends are sub to him. I might as well sub to him, too. And. You don't know how many are legit and how many aren't, right? So he keeps pumping up the numbers and pumping up the numbers to where you know how many he has right now, right? How many subs? No, how many? 61 million. <laughs> now, that's a lot. That's that is a insane. lot of freaking subs. But it, what? here's the part. But the thing is, it's so far above even the biggest mainstream stars that it doesn't make sense. Meaning... The closest mainstream main like someone you've heard of to him is Justin Bieber. And he's got half that number. He's got like 30 million. And Justin Bieber, as you know, has done a few things. 
And right? he's made a few albums and, and I felt bad the first time I ever heard Justin Bieber was a room full of interns in my company. And I go, wow, that woman's got a fantastic voice. Hey, you know, and I thought uh, Michael Jackson, when I was a little girl, I heard him on the radio and, and thought it was a girl. Yeah, so Yeah. I, and Justin Bieber does sound very feminine. And of course, the interns were and looks horrified. very feminine. They're going, oh, how dare you speak of him like that? He's <laughs> Canadian. He's a treasure. And it's like, whatever. So, but the point is, and, and so, and below Justin Bieber, you've got Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and, and like he doubles, like he's got Taylor Swift and Katy Perry's members like combined, right? There's no one even close. There's nobody at 40 and 50. It's like him. That's all there is. And I don't care how many of his videos you watch. I've tried. It's like, he's got no content. Yeah. I've tried it's to watch too. Out of the yeah. five forms of art that are out there, right? Everything 2D, I'm sorry, pictures, sculptures, music, dance, literature, right? He does none of these things. <laughs> he does none of them. He, he comments is on a he few- funny? He's not funny. Okay, is he attractive? No, he's, have you seen the beard he's growing is he lately? intelligent? I look better than him right now. That's is he intelligent? Things. No, I mean, he's smart enough sweet, to be he's making Swedish. a fortune. He's not even American. <laughs> like that matters <laughs> and, well for entertainment purposes it does most of the entertainment I, icons are american and the ones that aren't we make american you're from australia fly up here from south america yeah get shakira in here nobody you know we we bring them in then we transform them the point is okay and this, let me let me end on this because i don't want to rant on him too badly but uh, just for the heck of it and his I, name the name is horrible yeah it's a video game reference pew pew laser gun pew pew pewdiepie instead of cutie pie laser I gun get it. Just it's dumb me. but okay here uh, the last thing i want to mention is it, this will give you some perspective so you watch the video right before the flat earth video they did it and he's selling and you get me when you're looking at his channel like you know like all the things like discussion page and about and all this there's nothing filled in people are discussing pewdiepie i guess i mean no, we're I mean, he, discussing pewdiepie it's wasn't like it? he's not even promoting himself inside his own channel it's like about it says i make videos literally three words his chant he subscribes to no channels his playlists are minimal and when in his description page literally the first line is by my chair right he endorsed a uh, a gaming chair for like three hundred. Oh, I've seen other people with this chair. All right, so well, not the, many. the logo is right on the. Yeah, chair. yeah, it's, yeah, I've seen this chair it's, on other it's, people's channels. Three hundred ninety nine bucks. Supposed to be very comfortable. Whatever, three hundred ninety nine bucks, and in his last video before that one, he was saying that if I can sell a hundred more, I can get into another bracket of royalty. But he said he's basically saying he, I he cannot get people to buy his chairs, and it's like look, sixty one million subs, even one percent of that is 600,000 subs. He can't sell 100 chairs. That's literally the first line of description. He didn't, if you have 60 million subs, you should have... So what you're saying is he doesn't have 60 million actual real subs. No, he doesn't have 60 million subs. I don't know how many he has, but he is, it's, he's a paper tiger. He's a shell. There's nothing there. He doesn't do anything. He's literally a marketing creation. That's all he is. He doesn't... Uh, be, literally find me find me three videos find me a video where i can actually laugh at and it's like oh no you're old i'm like no look i spent my entire life in gaming i know what gaming funny is and he ain't it he's he's literally popular for being popular and unfortunately his marketing company the company that's pumping the money they can't back off now because like they've gone too far they can't stop but aren't they very pleased with him their investment well, he makes money, but it's he's not. There's nothing. There's no secondary thing to it. He's not getting endorsements. They tried to make, put him in a television show that failed. Uh, there's nothing. There's no content. I mean, if you're if you have that so much, he should be on every talk show every month, or he doing have, commercials or something. He I should be. He should be all over the place, and everybody knows. Apparently, it's one of those inside jokes. Everybody knows. It's like, yeah, he doesn't really. Isn't really doing There's anything. No, there, there. There's nothing you. there. Seriously, same thing with Paris Hilton. Mm -hmm. I hate to compare the two, but they are similar. So anyway, they'd make a you. lovely couple. No, no. There's nothing. There. <sighs> just, anyway, sorry. There you go. That's my wrap. Um, I'm okay, PewDiePie. We've discussed. Shall we talk about airplane wings and fuel? Big, big, big uh story that's been exploding on the flat earth scene doesn't really have anything to do with flat earth but of course when you're a flat earther your mind is open to all sorts of different things and that happened with no forest on flat earth and we have people who are adamantly one way or the other on that and it's the same thing with this now i'll tell you right up front that initially 
the airplane wing thing sounded ridiculous to me that what are you what are you talking about there's the, the old things don't run on jet fuel i've been on a billion plane well not a billion i've been on a lot of planes and flown overseas many times and i know that they put fuel in because you can smell it when you're on the tarmac right. um, you see them pull the thing up the fueling cart up and but when you look into it, the possibilities of the weight being supported by those wings gets less and less likely. However, I am not an engineer. I don't know exactly about how wings are built or the who, what, why, when, and where. I've come to the conclusion that I don't know enough about it to speak on it coherently and come up with a clear cut decision. But I do think that there's a possibility that planes use less jet fuel than we're being told at the very least and you know a lot about planes i've been to the air museum with you in seattle and you're and i knew even before we went together air and space museum that right. uh you you just you just know a lot of a lot about a lot of things but a lot about airplanes when we do the drone strike training we're actually asked to disassemble several small jet engines mm. so yeah no no uh, okay I, I I don't want to dwell on this one, but I <laughs> well, this I, is you. I don't want to dwell on this, but but no, no. <laughs> but, well, okay, it is. I appreciate. Look, I love the fact that flat Earth changes people into open-minded vessels that that can grab anything and and latch onto it and say, yeah, this is possible now. I love that aspect of flat Earth. I really, really do. Something like this, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's a nice little side project. Am I going to buy it? Nope, it's not one of my favorites. Not not even close. And it really doesn't even dovetail into the core flat Earth concept, other than it's another conspiracy. It's interesting. There's a plane. People yeah, it, if, <laughs> if it if it goes anywhere with it, yeah, it's fine. But for me, you're you're also talking about a different type of guy. You know, I I also believe in fission fission weapons. You know, atomic atomic weapons. I do. I, I I always have, and in the end, I always will for various reasons. But I won't go into them. So for this, it's like, yeah, it's great, wonderful, fantastic. You guys want to enjoy that? It it helps the whole open minded thing. It's not going to be a long term thing with us. I think the no forest on flat Earth will carry for it will carry a, a greater distance because it is tied to the core flat Earth. But well, me, the plain truth did a good video on it. Coop Stoop did a couple of videos. Oh, yeah. There's no, no, no. a couple of people that I can't recall their channel names. They've done videos. Globebusters last show on the, this past Sunday um, in March uh, it, 2018. It's... They they did a show discussing it, and neither Bob nor Jaron said, I 100% believe that they don't use jet fuel. No, they just said they're very open to exploring it, possibilities. Yeah, for me, I look, at, not everybody's going to agree on everything, obviously, in the flat earth. Uh, when it comes to, for me, though, I put it in the same rank as as Dallas Goldbug's facial recognition stuff. How's that? Well, you know, the guy says like Jimmy Carter is actually JFK. Yeah, that's true. And, and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it's interesting. And I love the possibility and you could turn it into something, but I don't Bill think Hicks, Alex Jones, Bill Hicks, Alex Jones, Bill Hicks, Alex Jones. I don't, teeth. I don't think that the jet thing's interesting. I don't think it's going to have any legs in the long run. So I've got other things to focus on. Like, I should mention this. Like, like here's a story for for example. Can I segue into something? Yes, please. Or, or, yeah, something, which is uh, something I ran into uh, the peanut gallery actually sent it to me on uh, from Russia Today. So I, I look at when I look at my news sources, I look at CNN, I look at Fox, I look at NBC News, and I look at Russia Today. And every once in a while, Russia Today will put out something, otherwise it's known as RT.com. They'll put out something that the Americans don't cover. Which is interesting, you know, like, and this one was really glaring to me. It was a, it was a story called, um, uh, I could smell smoke high school evacuated as ISIS supporting student brings bomb to class. And this was today. Are right? there really in American high schools, ISIS supporting students? Well, Let's that's just, real. that's, that's where it gets interesting. I because, mean, ISIS oh, is fake at the very, oh, no, no, I got that, but here's and, the thing. Our, we didn't cover we this. created them so nobody nobody died but a teen let me the like the first okay. paragraph a teenager has been charged with bringing a homemade bomb into a utah high school students spotted a backpack committing smoke prompting an evacuation of some 1100 kids 
Uh, following the discovery, it was at Pine Valley High School in the city of St. George. The school was evacuated for two hours while bomb squad officers swooped in, and there was a bomb. Wait and, a minute. You're walking around with a backpack and smokes coming out of it. Yeah, it wasn't a very good bomb. That doesn't sound that good. But but the point was, and, and the city, you know, the Hurricane City Police Department made a statement. St. George Police Department made a statement. The point was, is that we, the United States, we didn't cover it. It, it, you know, we, we covered the Parkland thing all day long, but this well, there's a Parkland tie-in that police say that the the young person that supposedly made this bomb backpack bomb um, rose a or not rose uh, put up a uh, um, ISIS flag the day of the Parkland shooting. Yeah, whatever. Um, but uh, I, I, again, I at a school. It was, it's so. interesting, and the reason the reason why I think this this story got no traction in American media is because there's no way to spin it. There's nowhere to go with it. Meaning, you can't turn it into gun control because he didn't have a gun. Can't turn it into bomb control because there is no such thing. And um, something that Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, said, which was uh, one of his best quotes, which was, "Only give people the amount of truth that they can handle." Meaning you don't really want to scare, you know, wh what what good does running this story inside the United States do? You're just going to scare parents, but they, there's nothing for the parents to do. It's like you throw it at them, you know, you throw gun control at them and the parents are like, OK, well, maybe we should do something in gun control. Something like this. Parents are like, holy crap, I don't know if I want to send my kid to school this month. Or, you know, they start questioning the education system. Maybe we should set up metal detectors or bomb detectors at the doors. So well, that's was, probably what they want to do. Well, again we didn't cover it that's the that's the interesting thing about another this. one is in delaware there was a uh, a boy who threatened to burn down the charlotte valley central school in the town right. of davenport right and a uh, eight-year-old boy who was charged with a felony a felony crime that was um, interesting so that's also tied into all this yep. so i didn't hear about that in our media either but then again i don't watch news and i only oh happen upon certain things in doing the kind of looking that we all do within flat earth, like these stories you're talking about with, with RT, but um, maybe these were reported, but it is kind of true that I bet there's a lot of things going on, both real and fake that never really get disseminated to the masses. And the reason is because there's no way for them to spin it. Yeah. Just like you said. Yeah. If there's a, if there's something that George Carlin said, which is, uh, you know, uh, never trust anything that you, that you see that's out, you know, in the media, basically the, the government releases this report because there's an ulterior motive. There's a reason for every story that's out there for the most part. I mean, and local they oftentimes news. back each other up. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, just like anyway, I said about I the, about the ISIS flag being raised on the day of the Parkland shooting by a whole different youngster that had nothing right. to do in yeah. a whole different state. Um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, there's a Tesla in space. Therefore we live on a globe. Really? Oh, I there's the know. ISIS flag going up in a school on the day of Parkland shooting. Oh, well that means the Parkland shooting was real. Did you have to bring up Tesla? Really? Yeah. My blood pressure was pretty much leveling out. <laughs> that thing is still out there somewhere. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. When I was when I was at the Colorado Springs meetup, which I did uh, just just a couple days ago, hmm. so I want you to tell us all about that. There was about thirty people there, and you spoke on stage for about three solid hours. Pretty much, I was. That's there. That's crazy for a meetup. Usually I that know. Sort of I was, thing doesn't happen. I was there from what noon to five. I think it was. Uh, it was. We took a break, and and I the, you know just put me up in a chair and a microphone, and let me you know two turntables and a microphone actually, mm -hmm. and we're just talking, and 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 it was great. It actually worked out. I I like the format. And I'll probably use that for some of the other things I do in the future, which was they had screens behind me and then there was a guy in a laptop that i could you know i could point at and say hey look up this hey look up this and then once it was up on the screen i go okay you know let's let's talk about what's going on here and so i opened with uh i think eight or ten and you've probably seen most of them the tesla slides you know people yes. that put you know the car with chewbacca or fear and loathing in las vegas or you and your three cats me and my three cats <laughs> that's, and that's three funny. cats and uh <laughs> And and there was a guy. It was really wonderful because there was a guy in the audience who didn't, who who actually did not have any idea what was going. on. He'd actually missed the entire SpaceX event. And so when we finally got to the real slides of SpaceX, he's going, 
no, seriously, that's what it is. I, no, those, those are the real slides. I go, yeah, those are the real slides. He's going, no. <laughs> I go, yeah. I think the whole event with SpaceX and Tesla helped our cause. I think it helped oh, absolutely wake did. people up. Absolutely did. Even your your hardened skeptics, it was just so. But it much had stuff. another effect. Uh, in that, I know somebody who's a business person here in Houston, and he said, "Oh, it was just probably a Tesla advertisement. I think it's great he did something like that. Look at all the free press he got." And I said, "But he's lying to the public, right. saying that he shot something into space and it's it's flying out there." And he and said, it doesn't matter. It's all about money and commerce. And I think it's a great thing that he did. I wish our company could come up with something like that. Well, I was appalled. That's the funny thing, because I'm sure there were other car companies that called him up afterwards and said, but hey. It, this guy thinks, and many people, it's okay to lie and pretend that there's space travel as long as you're making a buck. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was awful. It was terrible, terrible. But at the same time, yeah, it opened people's eyes because mm -hmm. there was a lot of buzz because it, because the initial pictures were so fake looking the thumbnails were so fake when you were sent like it, you know the average person on the street was sent a link and you got that profile shot it's like oh what's this piece of crap because now with the internet has gone so far that we've all received photoshopped pictures from people over the years different memes pictures of cats people things in the water people's uh, you know, things in space that when you got this one it's like okay another fake space thing and then you click on it, it's like whoa wait a minute this is on cnn it's real uh and and to the, your friend's thing it's like you next time you run into them say okay fine it was spacex advertising or tesla advertising where are the logos where there's three different cameras three different giant selfie sticks on this car not a single logo or brand anywhere on that car not from another company not from spacex not from tesla that thing should have been wall-to-wall -wall advertisements there should have been pizza ads there should have been verizon on there should have looked like nascar and it didn't the space when when's the last time you saw an astronaut's uniform they didn't have a single patch on it not even the helmet helmet didn't have anything on it disney alone not to go off on a little rant, Disney alone <laughs> would have paid exclusive rights to replace that astronaut with a stormtrooper since they own the rights to Star Wars now. And that's it. And plus, why are you using the freaking roaster? Why are you using a convertible? The top of the line, the Tesla top of the line is their Series 3, the four-door sedan. Why isn't that there? It's bigger. You can put more stuff on it. You put people, you know, you can put a, a stormtrooper and a Borg and Groot and Boba Fett or whoever you want in the backseat. Oh, I'm sorry, Iron Man. Put him in the backseat. That thing pays for itself. It never, ever happened. But my my biggest, I, I won't go off on this too much because we got other topics before we shut down, which is the, 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 the greatest example of misdirection I've ever seen in the history of live television, which was the, the production trucks, you know, because it's all about producing things. It's like camera one, camera two, camera one. What did we miss? What was missed? What didn't you see? You never saw how the car actually got there. Well, they said that the explosive bolts uh, allowed it to, you know, be out. No, 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 no. I mean, the actual main rocket, the main Falcon rocket. So oh, it was the main correct, Falcon correct. rocket and the three boosters. Three boosters come off and then they that's where they focus their, their attention. It's like, okay, there's booster one landing here, booster two landing here, booster three crashes in the water and car. And it was brilliant. Everybody fell for it, including me. Magic trick. And, and what, what you missed was because the car had to detach from something, the giant Falcon rocket. That thing had to tumble back down below them. The, the, the thing should have split open like a walnut. And that, that was your money shot. Shoot it from the, facing the, the driver. The thing would have split right in half down the middle. The thing spins backwards. And that, and that was completely missed. Three cameras. You never saw the Falcon rocket. You never actually saw the Falcon rocket. You only saw the boosters. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant how they, how they, how they did that. I received an email from Rob who was talking a little bit about what we discussed earlier, gun control, yeah. who says, when there's a gun control story on TV, I see a massive social control and hundreds of people demanding that some of their rights be removed. And that's exactly what's happening. We were touching on that earlier about what is going to be coming into schools because of Parkland and because of Sandy Hook and all these other things, that uh, there will be um, uh, metal detectors, guards um armed guards etc at if schools budget, in the future people want that now and then children are going to grow up it's like the book 1984 when we enter the world of 1984 when you read that book the world is as it is sometimes the main character 
goes back in his memory as to what life used to be like, but right. you never see the slow transition. And what's going to happen with these children is they're going to grow up in a world where there are metal detectors and armed police and guards in their school. And they, they will be living in the 1984 world. We, what do we got? I mean, depending on how old we are, we're, you know, I'm 55, you're in your late 40s. We, we're, our time here is almost over, you know. We, we, well, <laughs> nice. speak for yourself, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, you know, we're not, we're not 13. Um, it doesn't matter about us. It matters about the children and getting them trapped into that 1984 total control world where they see it as good, where they want the police officer, where they'll feel security that there's somebody with a gun in their school guarding them. Right. That's where they're trying to take this. And it's I don't know totalitarian it's gonna... tiptoe. People uh, are, that we're getting closer and closer to it. And meanwhile, on the sidelines, people are asking for it by name. Control me, take away my rights. Uh, I mean, they can, you know, my opinion, if you heard my show last night, which is you can only take it so far and I, I won't spend too much time on this. Gun control is only going to go so far because the system that set it up has built a massive foundation. that's never, ever going away the, between the gun manufacturers. But the thing, the, the part, let me mention this real quick, that I think is hypocritical because what we're talking about is media going after guns, which is again hypocritical because they were part of the system that set that whole thing up they were the ones that for years and years said oh yeah we're going to endorse these movies that glorify you know guns are cool guns are sexy you know how do you think bruce willis sylvester sloan arnold schwarzenegger and all those guys made their money it's not because they were quoting shakespeare it's because they were shooting people with guns and guns really became the souvenirs of the movies and so now years later you want to come back and say oh yeah we want to take back all those toys that you were collecting over the past several decades that we took we sold to you what do you think is going to happen men men women are easier than that but but men they're like well, I, you're not taking my toys back it's not going to happen so sorry you guys can talk about gun control all you want but it's just the system is it's too far along way too far along and going after the nra is is just silly in my opinion well I don't know if any of what's going on is about gun control. I don't really think it is. I think it's about people control. And there's a really good video by Mike Williams, the Sage of Quay Radio Hour. Uh, he has a police officer named Alex who's been on before um, after the Vegas event and Sophia Smallstorm. So if you haven't seen the latest or not seen, listen to the latest Sage of Quay uh, radio hour video on YouTube, you definitely should because it does discuss the Parkland thing. And, and actually right. what more than less of what actually occurred and more as to what it's all about, capstone events, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, really good stuff. Um, I want to say hello to Amanda Daniel Bays, who uh, had all four of her wisdom teeth taken out. She's a Facebook friend of mine and involved with uh, with all the same looking into truths as we all are. And uh, just want to wish her well. And I also want to say hello to Daniel Gaynor and Judy Gaynor. Um, they wrote me and were asking, when are we going to do another show? And I told them I'm doing this show in Russian vids. And they uh, they both just sent a nice email saying that they'll be listening. So I wanted to say hello. I wanted cool. to say hi to Jack Frost, who wrote me as well, asking when are you going to do another show? And then he asked me about my cat, Rory. Uh, I have three cats and Rory is an orange tabby. And he developed a little situation. I had people at my house and a lot of stress for the cats. But Rory's the friendliest and he loves strangers. And he developed a little habit where he would go outside of his litter box, which he hadn't really done before, but only a small amount. And I knew that meant he had a, a urinary issue. And I took him in and he had developed um, uh, struvite crystals in his bladder, which is something that happens with male cats. And um, he has some medication that will make those crystals be gone. He wasn't blocked. He's not going to die. He's fine. And playing and purring and eating and everything's all fine again. Cool. So. Uh, I had a couple of people ask me about that. Mm -hmm. And um, one more thing, I want to say hello to Alex Aquarius. Um, an interesting video by Alex lately. He went into Taco Bell and videoed himself asking the Taco Bell employees about the 666 and the Taco Bell logo. And, you know, you'd think that they'd all be oblivious to it. But one of the guys he spoke to said, yeah, I know it's there. It's kind of creepy. 
Just imagine. Well, we're talking about the same company that also did their latest uh, promotional thing called, instead of Illuminati, Belluminati. Belluminati. You know? <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty, I mean, it's, I got to hand it to It them. is it's, kind of funny, to be yeah. honest. It is. But, and this commercial is all about the sinister stuff, how there's secret things. And and um, I, I even handed out um, custom Illuminati cards at the Springs thing. Yes. And I, oh, did you really? No, I have the... Uh, the no, not those. This one, these me, were, but yeah, these were custom ones. No, not that's the, nice. Yeah. Um, anything else that you need to mention about that 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 uh, meetup? I mean, it was, uh, it was only there was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, anyone that's doing, you know, I'm, I, in fact, I've got three or four more promos I got to do after this show. Which anyone wants me at their meetup, just give me a plane ticket and pick a hotel for me. It can be cheap. I stayed at a motel. I heard uh, you stayed at a motel that you picked out that they paid. I, I did. Get, you're lucky that you even got soap in that one. I'm lucky that I got soap in that <laughs> hotel. Those walls were paper thin. Oh, well. Let me tell you. And uh, crack was being sold down the street. There was a liquor store right across the street. Thank God. It was perfect for you is what you're saying. It was. It was. <laughs> no, I've, no, I've been in worse. It was great. But if anyone wants me to come to their meetup, just let me know in advance. And I mean, they used miles to, to get me out there, which is great. I don't mind. It was kind of fun. And we've yeah. got uh, the flat earth conference coming up not only in denver in november of 2018 which we've been talking about since the the one last year in raleigh right. but the one in edmonton canada has been announced now right and you can go to the feic website and buy tickets for that and i know i'm going to be there you're going to be there some of the same people as last time will be there and people that have not yet been announced that we don't even know who i was about to say because i don't i i was i'm supposed to make a promo for this thing but oh, wait you weren't it. invited i oops no just joking. fine <laughs> fine well i was invited to the one in north korea so that that that's going to be a win really um, are you making that up yeah, I'm totally making that up. There, oh, no, I was going to say, North Korea would invite you're allowed me. to go to North Korea, but no, no, I'm probably, I, heck, if North Korea invited me, I'd probably go. Why not? Yeah, so would I. Um, uh, it'd be interesting, okay. but no, the Canadian people uh, haven't been announced the the presenters yet. Well, you and me, we know. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't have the Robbie full D list. And... I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to make a, tr a promo for this thing, but I don't have the full list, and it's wild ways, ways off. It's in August. Yeah. It's in August, 9th yeah. and 10th, actually. So yeah. if you're interested in either of those. And then, of course, uh, we've got the one coming up in the UK, which is coming up in April, and that is right. next month from now yeah. that uh, Gary John is putting on. And um, I messaged Gary John on Facebook a little bit here, there, and everywhere. And let me think. I asked him. Oh, he sent me a long message about airplanes. Uh, he says uh, there's about 51 days to go till the event in the UK, the conference. Hmm. And uh, he says, time is zooming along. And he says, hello to you. And he asked me what I make of the plane fuel thing. And he said he contacted a pilot to get a definitive answer. And he says the pilot answered in a roundabout way, which left him a bit bewildered. So what we need are people that we know and trust, like flat earther pilots who 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 can go and monitor all right the jet fuel being put in and i would say flat earther pilots because i would trust them to not be co-opted by somebody and would be they'd be giving us the, tr the straight truth to all right let me all right I'll, let me give one more or angle. i could just say just trust in mark no, no, don't just trust, don't, don't trust, just trust in me. But at the same time, it's like, look, even if there was some sort of jet fuel conspiracy, mm -hmm. what do we, you know, who, who's been, yeah, fine. It, it'd be a money-based conspiracy. Which, well, I mean, in many cases, even globe earth is a money power control thing. Yeah. But I mean, this one's minor by comparison. I mean, sure. It, it's millions of what dollars, do people but not do for who, money, even but, five bucks. So but who's benefiting from it? it, it it's like, okay, so does that mean we well, should be paying pressurized for air actually can be used to run planes primarily with some fuel, then we have a form of close to free energy that's being hidden from us. And it could be used for other applications as well, like cars. Maybe and I'm not saying I believe I in this. Know. I don't know. I don't it's know. very interesting. And and I know there's people that are very much one way or the other on this. 
um, it's a polarizing topic. And even talking about it, you know, you're going to get the hate mail and the, oh my gosh, I'm glad you discussed it mail. Right. So make your own decision, do your own investigation, right. do your own research. I got you. Uh, we should also mention real quick, it is, we just passed the one year anniversary of Kyrie Irving who outed himself as a flat earther. You know, and he also not step back off that either. He has not. He went to, now he's on a different team. Amazing what a year makes. Uh, he's no longer playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was traded as part of a massive trade deal. He's now the marquee player for the Boston Celtics, which is even a bigger basketball market. And he never backed off. And when he came to the second All-Star game, uh, where he's a flat earther, of course, they were asking him questions, and one of his fellow players was even holding up a spinning globe, saying, hey, will you sign this for me? And he wouldn't do it on camera. Good. He probably didn't do it at all, because he's like, look, it's, he's not going to back off. Why would he? That's his thing. I mean, he really at least his new shoe line has some flat earth stuff built into it. And he even had a he had even had a flat earth display at his sneaker unveiling uh, when he was in Boston. So, no, he has not. He has not backed down at all. He still hasn't endorsed anybody yet, but eh. Not worried. Um, there's an event tomorrow night, tomorrow night being the 8th of March, 2018, where um, Steve is putting together a uh, show with Robbie Davidson, a guest speaker. And I know you got the email on that as well. And uh, it's called Talk Shoe, Talk Shoe, like shoe on yeah, your foot. I've done Talk Shoe talk Internet shoe stuff. Radio. Yes, you have. Uh, Steve Harris is the founder of it on American Underground Network. So uh, it's going to be a call-in show, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the 8th of, uh, which is tomorrow as of the recording of this show anyway. So uh, Robbie D is going to be the guest on this event. And I'm going to put a link in the description box of this video of Talk Shoe so that you can go check it out. Uh, be cool to, uh, you know, Join, uh, listen, and you know, support Robbie and Steve on that. So there's a guy. I don't know if, if you've seen it. I think it's a one of those Asian copycat channels that's literally going through and mirroring every one of my thousand. You know, I broke a thousand videos recently. Nice. And yeah, I guess uh, it's a little hard to manage sometimes, but they're actually replicating every one of my thousand videos. Now I know they're only doing it to get the hits, you know, get the nickels. There's been somebody but, that's been using, putting all my videos together as well. Yeah. All the and Ro time. Rob Skiba has got three or four. I'm there. just like, eh, whatever, enjoy. But, yeah. Have, have fun with that. Help yourself. Yeah. Uh, where was I going with this? I don't know. A <laughs> uh, couple, couple other things I wanted to bring up. One was the, if you, you and I remember there was a German television team that, because I've been, you know, my whole declaration of war, you know, taking the fight to science and said, look, you guys want to debate me by all means, let's, let's get somebody. And a German television team tracked down a physicist at Georgetown. And then they came to me, but he wanted very, very structured to what happened. So what happened was, did he I, want like sword play involved? And uh, yeah, it was kind of bare like, chested. Well, it, it very <laughs> These much are my like, rules. <laughs> like, like gladiator. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to pick the name Spartacus and they said, no, no, that was taken. So no, what, what he did was he, they wanted me to, to do five questions on video recorded pre-recorded so i would ask five questions they would send him the question the video and then he would respond in video and so the five questions i threw at him were you know because they have to be somewhat scientific based and i gave him long distance photography which i won't go into vacuum versus gravity vacuum of space versus, versus gravity the eclipse shadow both ways, both the, the solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse, moon temperature, and the Van Allen radiation belt trap question. Mm. And once he got those questions, that was it. He was he folded up like a card table. Did he even message and say, no, I don't think I want to do it? Or did, was it just like a, a dead connection on the yeah, phone? He just, yeah, he just bailed. The, the German television team, you know, they were super hyped up about this, and that was it. Well, he, even if he had these questions, he had time where he could go through and figure out the answers to all this. Yeah. But, and, and but no, he, he wouldn't do it. Nope. So he was out, which was which was perfectly fine with me. It kind of reminds me of and now, if you know, there's there, people have asked me during certain interviews, uh, what would be what would be the proof that, that I would need to, to give up flat earth and believe in the globe? And 
up until very, very recently, I was, you know, I would say, and I still think it's a good one where it's like, okay, give me a 4K camera, put it on the side of a rocket and launch it into space. Don't ever hit pause. Don't hit stop. Make sure we have the complete footage until this thing. Yeah, curves but they down. could still fake all that. Yeah, but not, not easily. We still have. What never about gotten- just measurable curvature or uh, um, motion of Earth? The real show the Earth is actually moving. They can't yeah, do that either. Something something that you could come up with that they could they could sh- give it to you something within means like putting a 4k uh camera on a rocket or an 8k camera that's doable mm. i mean you can do that you know that do that today but you know uh, another one that came up recently because i've been really digging into the whole vacuum thing ever since i had that that industrial vacuum expert was and you you've heard of it before but i think it bears repeating which is no we show me an astronaut in a freaking vacuum chamber doing a test uh, up until now, we've never really had all the astronauts. Remember, they train underwater. But didn't they have one where they were dropping the feather and? Yeah, but there was no astronaut in it. That was yeah, the the, the feather. That was the giant vacuum chamber. I'm saying, take a guy in a suit, put him in that vacuum chamber, and crank it up. So and why the, would there not be a guy in a suit? It, be, why do you think that can't be done? Because the only test that I saw was a black and white test that was done in the late 50s, early 60s. And I can't remember. I think it was Seventh Day Truth Seeker or somebody else that put it up where the, the suit wasn't wasn't perfect. And he blacked out real fast because you remember when if you're exposed, a human body is exposed to a, a vacuum, your things will start to boil at room temperature. Right. You we've know? seen ISS footage of them out there doing a spacewalk where you can see a finger through a glove. Uh, you don't. Yeah, I know. And the, the suits don't look pressurized. The, the hands look quite thin. And I I had thought at one point, it's like, no, have we put astronauts in vacuum chambers before, haven't we? And then I, it took me back to the movie Armageddon with, with Bruce Willis when they were doing that astronaut testing stuff. And most of the stuff was done in the swimming pool. But then they put him in this room, and I remember it very clearly, where they saying, okay, we're going to make this thing into hold a vacuum, so get your helmets on quick. You'll be able to get your helmets on. And that was it. That was the rest of the scene. They never actually showed them in a vacuum environment. And I think it's way too dangerous. And the and what uh, the, the show I was watching said, the only reason they train in underwater settings is that's the best film conditions. Meaning mm. the underwater setting is a best the best way to film zero G. But if you're in an actual vacuum, that's the exact opposite because then you've got no resistance at all. So there's no there's no air resistance. I mean, you wouldn't be moving in slow motion. It would be just you in a so vacuum. So if anybody ever saw an astronaut in a suit in a vacuum and the guy didn't black out and die or girl, yeah. they would see the astronaut would be able to move really fast. And then that well, would 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 debunk every video we've ever shown yeah. of the slow mo outside the ISS like, or the moon. Oh, oh hell, the moon stuff is is a perfect yeah. example of that. And looks like look, not only you're in a vacuum, but you're in one sixth gravity. So the vacuum is an ideal way to prove it. Yeah, and to disprove friggin- all the footage they've offered us ever. Because everybody has said recently, well, is that uh, the you know there's too much air inside a spacesuit and it would try to get out. So you'd blow up like the Michelin Man really, really quickly, and you wouldn't be able to bend your arms. You wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, you'd be you'd be you know re- you'd have no mobility at all. So it's a why haven't we ever seen an astronaut in a freaking vacuum chamber? It's like they go out uh, outside of the ISS all the time. You think you want to test that out? before you actually got into that airlock and they say oh no we test in the pool that way if there's water coming in it's like yeah yeah but the other thing i i don't know if i sent you that little video which because i I, i'm trying not to understate the power of a vacuum which was did you see that video that was out uh uh fairly recently or i shouldn't say recently we found it where it shows it was in germany where they took a, a steel rail car a hollow like a fuel tank from a rail car and they exposed it to a vacuum from the inside and the thing just crumpled up like a like a pop can just went and it's like holy smokes and this was you know a full-blown steel steel can you know container and so you're saying okay what's that got to do with anything it's like well again the iss how does that how is the iss not exploding because that's just a thin aluminum shell you know, with a vacuum of space on the outside trying to rip it apart. The the air's gotta go somewhere and it doesn't. The the, the vacuum is a is a really interesting concept where science I don't think has a, a leg to stand on. Interesting. With no astronaut tests, no no structural rigidity tests. Remember my industrial valve and seal guy that, that called up 
a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. He goes, look, the ISS cannot exist the way it does. The reason why submarines can even survive down below, you know, way down is because they're really, really thick reinforced steel. And yeah, it's like, yeah, if you took that submarine and put it into space, you'd have a chance, right? But you're just putting a, a hollow, you know, aluminum toy up there. That thing should just shatter into a million pieces, not to mention the spacesuits, which shouldn't be able to, to function at all. Interesting. I wonder if at some time in the future, this ever will be, um, and they'll ever be able to figure out a way to make it something passable for them to fool us. Yeah. If, if anyone wants to look up the video that I'm talking about, uh, I'll punch it up real quick. I think all you have to do is go in and type in power of positive thinking. Back, yes. It's a, 20, <laughs> it's a Tony Robbins seminar. The power of vacuum. And I think it's called, yeah, railroad tank car vacuum implosion it was done nine years ago. Uh, it's got like 1.9 million hits. It's only 20 seconds long, and it is devastating how fast it is. Meaning the second they applied the vacuum, it's not like, you know, Hollywood where things break down and, you know, it's like, you know, you have time to actually recoil and scream. This thing instantly was destroyed by the power of the vacuum. So, again, how does the ISS pull it off? How do spacesuits pull it off? Put, put, that, that, that's got to be my new test because you could do it on the ground. Forget about putting... You know what? For me, that's some, I'm going to reclassify it. Forget about the 4K camera on the side of the rocket because you can do this anywhere. Just get a guy, put him in a vacuum. You know, you think that space suit will hold up? Let's see. You willing to go in there? No, yeah, that's up. the thing. Nobody in their right mind would be willing to get on, I don't mean top of a rocket literally, but in a capsule at the top of a rocket and have fuel ignited and be basically... Sitting, oh, Got sitting on the top space. of a pile of liquid explosive. No, who? Yeah. Name it. No, nobody. Sorry, no. Even hey, I. Even Mad Mike wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, he definitely wouldn't do it. Uh, Funny. But anyway, I, th I think it'd be great. So if I run into an astronaut, if I get a chance to talk to another one, that'd be the mm -hmm. first thing. Have you ever worn your suit in a vacuum environment? And they're going to say, you know, they'll probably say, well, I did it when I did spacewalks. It's like, really? So you could do it down here? We could, we could see that? But you'd have to have an independent somebody there because, you know, all you have to do is to fake that, you know, how easy that would be. You just go, you know, have them step into a chamber and say, well, it's a vacuum now. Uh, but you'd have to have something else there to kind of prove it, like like get a balloon, like a like a balloon that's bar barely inflated at all. Because if you put that in there with a vacuum, it would detonate, it would just you know blow up really fast. You'd have to have some objects in there. You couldn't just say, like, oh, look, this match went out. No, it's not enough. I'm watching the live chat and I see a couple of people, maybe five, six, 10 minutes ago, were saying that there were glitches where um, I would rewind. Do you know what I'm talking about? You and I have seen this before on video. glitch in the matrix? Yeah. You mean, like you saw a cat and then you saw the same cat? Is it the actually, same cat? That's actually even happened on a previous video of you and I. My cat yeah. jumped, remember? And then it jumped again. It jumped again. And, and that was so matrix. That was yeah. so great. Yeah. But they um, were saying it was happening within this, and I realized that I had left my Wi-Fi on. So I turned my Wi-Fi off, and I'm actually hardwired into my system. I'm not even sure why I had the Wi-Fi on. I would, I would do it. I know so, what you're talking about. It's been probably a year since we ran into that. Yeah, but um, some people were saying it happens here on this channel. So anybody out there, is it okay now? Testing, testing. I don't know. Let I'll check know. with Trinity and Morpheus. Okay. And I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to say hello to Joey Sylvie and uh, Danger Man Five. Um, also, Scuba Dracula, Effie Hamilton. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. And uh, Bling Bling, the VS of the ISS, and Lynn Mooring, and um, some very interesting conversations going on about vacuums. And uh, pretty much uh, echoing what you were saying, uh, Chris P was saying that your show was a good show, Mark. Hello, Travis Cloud. And um, what else is going on here? Um, Bob of Globebusters was uh, talking about their show on Sunday. Um, and they pretty much showed the different weights of the wings and what could be stacked on the wings. If you haven't watched that Globebusters, it really was a good one. One of my favorites, actually. Um, hello to Lenny from Canada. Um, who else is here? <laughs> uh, oh, Chief Crow and the Flat Earthworm says, peace on the plane. Love and, his uh, songs. Yeah, Love me too, song. me too. Um, I like the I'm in a cult one the best. I've I, used that multiple times. In fact, no I used idea why I love it. My license I, plate compilation. 
Yeah, it's a good one. Although, you know, somebody could not understand the lyrics and think that actually they're saying that we really are in a cult. I think it works either way. Yeah. I think it works. You can say, well, you know, you're in a globalist cult and you're not woken up or that we're in a cool cult. I mean, we haven't been labeled a cult from the media, so heck, we could label ourselves. Just and some see flat earth they're... haters say we're in a cult, but whatever. So that's um, a t-shirt waiting to happen. You know that, right? Flat earth cult gosh no please oh my um, god and you get a you get like a like a cartoony jim jones picture on the back and then in the back of the t-shirt just say free kool-aid oh my god you don't even have to use jim jones <laughs> yeah you just use a in fact you could use the the kool-aid logo ask me about free kool-aid <laughs> ask me ask me about free cool oh that's that's awesome no one do it please no one do it that's awesome we should totally do that Anyway, Chris Topher says the only thing that would make him go back to Globe Earth is putting a billboard on the moon because he says he knows it will never happen. That's actually a very good point. That that this this the thing with Tesla with Elon Musk is well, Elon Musk's car is that was just the first part of a bigger operation. You remember the only reason that rocket was even happening was because he still says he's going to send two tourists around the moon. Wasn't so, that supposed to happen in 2017? No, it's supposed to happen now, actually. 2018. In 2018, but it's not going to happen. Of course. So not. they're going to, and remember, this is. Unless so, yeah. it's completely, you know, Hollywood movie studio stuff. There's no way. I'm sorry. You can't. But look. people believe the Tesla was real, really. Uh, and not as people much. People were they, believing it. Not as, well, of course they were. Some, uh, some look at the comments it. on some videos. Oh my because, God. Well, that's because the mainstream media was feeding it to them. But in uh, having a mannequin and a car, that's easy. That's a cakewalk compared to what their next step is, which is you're talking about five people in a capsule going around the moon and back. How in God's name are you going to try to fake that? There is no, you'd have to, it'd have to be completely pre-production. You can, I'm giving you guys tips if you want to pull this off. I'll, I'll give you my, my crib notes right now, which is it's got to be completely pre-production. You have to fake the live stuff. You cannot do anything live except for maybe the, the rocket at the pad, maybe. Uh, you've got to find some sort of emergency to disable the cam cameras, most of the cameras on your way to the moon and back and turn it into an Apollo 13 remake. That's the only way you're going to pull this off to where you've got a system meltdown and then it's like, oh, are they going to come back or not? And then, you know, they do a whole MacGyver thing and, and they make it back. But that way, you're, at least your cameras is disabled. And then when you get back, you say, okay, we'll never ever do this again. You know what I mean, too dangerous. Why can't they just tell us the gosh darn truth? Well, men hate relinquishing power. Yeah, it's one of the rules. And they, money. They yeah. And there's money to be made. Mm -hmm. That's right. Elon. I'm sorry. I just hate him so much. The name the, Elon and the last name Musk the sounds quote, like a really, really bad cologne sold in a gas station in the middle of nowhere. The the quote which will live in infamy, which is a quote in itself, is you know it's real because it looks so fake. Mm -hmm. One of the worst quotes you, I mean, you're drawing attention to the fact that it looks so ridiculous and the color palettes are, are, are off and there's no, you only have two layers. You have the car layer and you have the earth layer. I mean, it's Disney could have done better effects than, mm -hmm. than what you had up there. So anyway, so he's supposed to do that this year. That's, that's the big thing is they're, they're supposed to be doing that the you know getting two people around them even though we don't know who these people are we don't know who the pilots are we don't know where the capsule is weren't they saying that it was going to be autopiloted oh yeah if they if they go down that <laughs> drone technique I, well you know what i mean even the tesla that's you, you got a mannequin so i wouldn't put it past them to say why would they the whole thing is so ridiculous that whatever they're going to do is going to be ridiculous would would you get no people won't even you've heard me say this people won't even get in a plane unless there's pilots in it we can do pilotless planes right now we can absolutely do this we could have all the pilots because we do this we'll you know use the drone i've seen in the movie airplane the autopilot he had fun <laughs> mile high club wow actually it was only <laughs> oral sex with with the uh, with the inflatable thing but that's but okay I think that you're in the mile high club if you achieve that right you know what i have to look that up i don't know I don't what know. the rules are it is, does that count i don't know maybe yeah. i don't know anyway the point is people won't get in a plane we can we can drone planes right now but would you get in a plane if you knew it was just being remote piloted by some guy in a warehouse eh, maybe not so multiply that by oh i don't know the moon no nobody that would be 
If something went wrong, they'd be completely on their own. We can't even get self-driving cars approved yet. You know, the self-driving car thing is, I think, an agenda that they're trying to push in some way as well lately. Well, you know, you know what the big hang up there is, don't you? With uh, people want their freedom. People want to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. That's yep, one not, big hang up yep, I've that's, got. That's, that's one Plus of them. the lack but, of personal control. That, that too. Even if all... I'm a bad driver, I'm a good driver. But even if I were a bad driver, I still think I would be a better driver than somebody else. There's something more fundamental than that, though, hmm. which is insurance. Oh. For example, your robot drive, robot car gets in a crash with a normal guy. Who's at fault? What you know? Because that guy is going to say well, that obviously the normal guy, not the yeah, robot. Something, well, exactly. <laughs> so he's going to say that something went wrong with the robot car, right? Yeah. And they're going to have to go through the black box, and then eventually you'll have robot car versus robot car both crash and then it's okay you know you both people are sitting in the back seats so they're completely so that point you're going to have to analyze black boxes and then it becomes a big software issue you're going to have to have software engineers in the courtroom discussing what went wrong with the cars you know who who wins that argument it's it's a logistical nightmare for the insurance but, so are they going to have to have the self-driving cars insured and do you have to uh, you know wouldn't you would no longer need a driving license that's just it. There's too many little nagging questions that would. Yeah, of course. There's some people. It's like, oh, driving cars. You don't. You don't ever have to. Uh, one, it would kill the cab industry. But well, Agenda Twenty One. Part of that is getting people back to the inner cities in very small places, kind of like tiny houses, but something like that, where yeah. you don't need a car, where everything is right around you, where there's movie theaters and entertainment and everything within walking distance. And many people would say, "Oh, that sounds easy and carefree and all of that," but really, they've got you. They've got you totally controlled. You have no freedom anymore. There's, there's, yeah, and there's too many. I'm sorry. There's too many unknowns. Let's say somebody's chasing you in a robot car or you know you're in a robot car and somebody's chasing you can you override said robot car and say look you got to get away from these guys they're coming after me or can uh, the powers that should not be cause your robot car to crash and you die because you know they want you dead because you know too much or something yep. and if you're going to go down that road look into the generic hackers you know uh, if a hack once you get a hacker that can figure out how to mess with a with a robot car oh my god think of the chaos kids would eat that crap up they'd film it to be like, oh, watch this. Look, that's a fuel truck over there. You know. Oh, wow. You know, there's too many little. You can talk about the cars like they're, you know, the it's basically the minority report. They, they, that whole that whole city was robot cars. But everything. The minority report was a really good movie. And a lot of the minority report, the pre-crime aspect and all of these things. It, a lot of that is what's happening in today's news. It is. It is. I agree. Hmm. Anywho. Who have um, we covered everything? Oh, I want to say hello to Sharif Shalan, by the way, and Daniel Reza, who have showed up, and Lord Nefarious. Um, Nefarious in our chat. I think Everybody. we did. Kyrie, Canadian conference, Denver conference, the Springs thing that I went to. Thanks, guys, for everybody out in the Springs. Hey, Raised by Gypsies, Mark, and uh, hey, Cammy's here as well. So I still hate PewDiePie. Uh, and uh, uh, Martin Liebke is here. Martin, we were speaking about you earlier and your filtered channel, your backup channel, and how people should sub that channel too. So, uh, Other than that, the, the war is going on swimmingly. We've, we're just about finishing year three. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, all you have to do is type in um, War on Science, National Geographic, and you'll see that wonderful National Geographic cover which says War on Science, March 2015, where the the, the cover is uh, a maintenance guy positioning a cardboard astronaut on the moon, which was great. Wow. And, yeah. We didn't declare the war. They did. We're just going to Sounds finish. very uh, 1984. In a way, <laughs> well, Eura Eurasia has always been at war with Oceania. Exactly. Until they tell you the opposite tomorrow and okay. put all the truth down the memory hole, so you don't know what's true and what's false. Hello to Validation Boy um, and Joe Green. Um, let's see. Brian Burton is here. I put a message into a, a, a chat on Skype that I was going live, and I wrote, "Mark and I are back." And then he wrote, "Are you going to show your back?" In the uh, show i said well no i'm never going to show my back because mark you and i both know that it's all the uh robotic 
evidence is in the back, my back. Yeah, there's some blinking lights back there. That yeah, and, probably you know. shouldn't. Oh, oh, I should also mention <laughs> that I got a uh, one of the Flat Earth University flags was sent to me. Interesting, nice. By the Peanut Gallery. It was made designed by Karen B, if I'm not mistaken. Oh wow! And, and printed out by the Peanut Gallery's daughter. And I took it with me to the Springs, and I gave it to the organizer of the meetup. Very nice of you. So he'll be spreading the word. I want to say hello to CC, who called into your show last night on Truth Frequency Radio, who's in the live chat right now. Oh, cool. Um, also, a guy named Faze said he wants to thank somebody who bought a Mark Sargent shirt that he made off his red bubble. Uh, he said someone from Canada bought the Mark Sargent t-shirt and he wants to shout There's them out. There's a lot of flat earthers in Canada. <laughs> oh a my gosh, I'm so them. excited to go to Edmonton in yeah. August because I've been to Canada before. I've been to Montreal. I used to live in Michigan. So going to Canada was not Montreal per se because it's a bit farther away, but going to Canada was not an unheard of thing. Sure. Um, so yeah, but I, I love Canada and I'm super excited about going. And that event is going to be held in this giant mall which sounds so uh, non-flat earth but the hotel's really cool and it's really going to be just a fun event for everybody and there, I, get some french fries and gravy some ketchup flavored potato chips oh yeah you know what i heard that in canada they have ketchup flavored potato chips yeah. and they have put 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 poutine poutine which is gravy on fries yep gravy on i'll fries. only try it if somebody can bring me a vegan version and um they have oh geez i'm gonna screw up the name Mm -hmm. uh we call them the dumplings pierogies oh pierogies i've pierogies seen those in california as well huge up there yeah. it's monstrous yeah. mostly because of the uh uh polish right right influence indeed so. uh what else is happening here um well just everyone's having fun in the chat hello jason 90 and the life of brian and anyway i appreciate everybody being here in the live chat give the video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel Hey, why not do it? It's free. And um, later, when the video actually goes from live Google Hangouts to YouTube, come back and make a comment on the video because I have a, a number of people watching, but then later, not as many comments because everyone who's here now doesn't come back and comment. And I'd like you to because I'm lonely without you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lie. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's, um, that's, a, that's a David Hogg certified lie. Ooh, don't mention that person's name. Sorry. Did I say David Hogg? No, you didn't. Sorry, David Hogg. <laughs> anyway, we've had uh, 190 people watching at our peak, which is pretty good, I guess. And uh, don't forget Russian Vids is going to be my guest on March 9th. 2018 on this channel and as i mentioned earlier he's been here before and i've interviewed him and this is just going to be more of a casual chat and uh we may or may not talk about mr hogg and all assorted other rv oriented topics and it should be fun thank you mark it's it's nice being back and talking to you again. yes although we've been talking on skype but exactly uh no it's cool it's and like a bicycle you get right back on and it's easy not touching that one. <laughs> not touching it. I look. I, look. I'm a little nervous that that one day I may eventually be lumped in that whole Me Too thing. Mm, no, never. Pro probably not though. No, never. Mark's one of the good guys. I am one of the good guys. He is. It's true. All right. Until we meet again. Talk to you later. And uh, keep it flat. George Clooney.